My name is Samad Sepaskoza. I teach industrial and infrastructure construction. Uh, thank you, Rob, to be here and give us first-hand information uh, about the piling process. Yep. Can you introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Rob Lee. I am the senior site supervisor on site. Um, and I guess my, my role is to coordinate the trades on site and also uh, as far as uh, delivering the projects from a site-based level for the quality, uh, quality supervision, uh, the safety, uh, I guess from start to finish on, on the project. So we'll start off with the civil works in, in, in ground and it'll finish with uh, bit out works. Okay. Later on. So first of all, before we focus on one specific activity, can you just explain what is happening here today? Yep. So currently we're we're doing our crane base foundations. Um, that will consist of four piles uh, and a pile cap at the moment, given that we're down at uh, our bulk excavation height. Um, with, with that, we've also got uh, the bulk ex excavation, which is continuing. Um, which is happening around us at, yeah. at the moment, along with construction of the, the piling platform at the moment as well. Okay, so, so they're doing piling for the crane base, right? Yes, it's okay. for, to stand the tower crane on. Okay, yeah. so what is the differences between this uh, pile and the other piles here I can see around? So, like in terms of dimensions and yeah, so functionality, we, we started off with the retention piling okay. um, and the capping beam works. So, which is what you can see just behind us uh, now, which is retaining, I guess, the, the road and all the infrastructure whilst we do the excavation. Um, and then from there, it's we start with the foundation piles. So, this will be all the the, the building that will be. I guess constructed off and the load yeah. will be transferred through these piles. Okay. So. so what is happening behind here? So currently there's the piling platform which is getting constructed. Uh, it gets constructed in with crushed sandstone and it's, uh, it's built in two layers. So they're, they're in 300 mil layers and then they get, uh, it'll get rolled and compacted and okay. it'll get tested by a geotech. Um, and then from there, once they're happy with the first layer for compaction, okay. it then gets free roll, or I guess right. another 300 mil depth worth of material will get spread over the whole area, okay. and it'll get rolled and compacted again. All right, okay. So we are here to uh, analyze the whole piling process. Can we focus on the piling process and uh, yep. explain the sequences of the piling here? So currently at the moment, the, the digger is cleaning up this, I guess the, the spoil from yesterday's okay. I guess, pile that was bought. Um, the piling rig is set up and ready to go and it's going to relocate into its position. Um, from there, it all the guys will set some offset marks to the surveyors set out for the pipe. Okay. And uh, once once they're happy with that they'll then begin the drilling process. Yeah. So these piles are 12 meters. Um, so they'll drill to full depth. They'll probably go maybe 200 or 300 mil deeper than okay. the, the full depth is. Right. Um, and then from there it will uh, once it's at full depth, they'll then begin pouring the, the pile concrete mix. Yeah. And then once they start pouring, they then start extracting the, uh, the auger. Oh, right. So, essentially, essentially it's uh, the pump is up the top. Yeah. And you'll see the long line of, right, of rubber yeah. that runs down the right. ramp, okay. connects right onto the back yeah, of the, yeah. the piling roof. And then from there, Continues up the mast, okay. So he makes his way right up into the top of the, right. the orbit. Okay. So, can you just uh, summarize different activities uh, will be done here at the same time, like in terms of concreting and also going to insert uh, reinforced cages or something so similar? The, in terms of the piling crew, so they're just getting the area ready. So that that'll be their 
the, the works that they'll do all day. So they'll be just clearing the stockpile. They'll be moving the hoses with, uh, with the machine, with the okay. digger. Because um, they'll be full of concrete and you can't right. move them by hand. Um, they'll also be, I guess, moving cages if they need right. to move cages around. So really, the, the rig will move very slow, but it'll be all the all the additional work happening around it to get it the area ready for that to just track in and okay. set up the position. Right. And then how long it takes time, the whole process, for um, one pile? So it's approximately about an hour, okay. given that we're, we have a, a bigger diameter pile. Uh, so these are 900 mil diameter piles. Okay. And as compared to the retention piles, which was 600 mil in diameter. So in terms of comparing them, it's about oh. half an hour process for the retention pile. Yeah. Um, to, it's about an hour process with this. Okay. Um, the reason, the other reason is it's, uh, we're, we're not that far away from the, I guess, the ground table, ground water table. Okay. And uh, given that, there is a lot of, um, it just seems to be taking a lot slower than, okay. you know, than rather than always drill and pour straight away. It's a lot. It's just a lot slower right. process. Okay. Who measures the productivity, and is that important for the main contractor or uh, for just uh, subcontractor? It is. It's important for all involved. Okay. Um, especially from a main contractor's point of view, given that we need to manage every process involved on the okay. on the job. So I won't just be managing piling, it'll be managing looking at how much material the bulk excavation takes out uh, to right through to other stuff happening on site with setting up site shed amenities okay. and uh, the, the real sort of day-to-day -day stuff. Um, from a subcontractor's point of view, right. if they're not working, they're not making money. Okay, so yeah. for them, they need to have a certain number of piles uh, to do per day, which will be the lineal meters of a pile, of the total lineal meters of, of the piling. Uh, and given with that, you know, they've all basically got their own quota that they need to make to be productive right. and profitable. Okay. So. And then, are you going to use the this uh, cage for that specific pile or? Yeah, so each, each pile gets designed specifically with its own cage. Uh, there will probably be cages that will be very similar if not the same, okay. uh, given that they might be in, a, in an area where uh, they're all I guess, designed to take the same capacity, the same bearing capacity or uh, obviously friction capacity as well. Right. Okay. So, but essentially, they, they might vary in, in length, um, but as far as diameter, they also do vary in diameter, but it's also the length as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You've got three cages here for that uh, crane base, yeah, isn't it? Or you have any additional one? So there's, for, for the crane base, there's four, four piles. Okay. Um, so each, each pile will have its own cage. Right, okay. And then the pile cap will... Uh, we'll sit over all four all right. piles, okay. which is which is what the tower crane will be sat on. Okay. So, uh, how many guys involved in this process in terms of labor, supervisors from subcontractor uh, side and also the main contractor sort of, side? I guess from a subcontractor's point of view, it's the piling rig and its crew are a separate company. Okay. So they subcontract to our main civil okay. subcontractor. Yeah. Um, and of of that, I think there, mm. I think there's about five people involved. So there's okay. a, a supervisor, um, the drill rig operator. There's also a machine operator. I guess for the digger, there's uh, I guess a general hand labourer okay. on the ground. And there's also another general hands yeah. uh, up at the pump as well. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, and then uh, why, why do you use this plate here? Like the big plate? So the plate is required for right under the bottom of the mast. 
on the okay. bar of the, the piling ring. So it's really just, it's just to give it that extra stability, uh, I guess, for the load that's going to be put through, right. the, through the mast. Okay. Um, yeah, the guys just want to make sure that they're, right. you know, they're quite comfortable in drilling the, the pile and not having any issues okay. with that. Yeah. And then how, how do you measure the quality of uh, the pile in terms of integrity and also maybe uh, yeah. the strength and load? So for strength-wise, every... I think it's every... About every seventh pile for the retention piling, or so the seventh or eighth pile, um, or in a percentage value, fifty percent of the, the piles uh, get tested okay. for the, the concrete strength. Um, it'll be the same as a concrete pour for a slab. The, the little cylinders that get um, they'll test the slump. Uh, they'll you know they'll usually take about four cylinders per test. I guess so. That'll be uh, for piling. It's uh, there'll be a seven-day test. So it'll be seven, fourteen-day, uh, twenty-eight-day test, and there's one spare. Right. Okay. So and then uh, I guess for the quality side and to I guess to test that the pile isn't fractured or damaged. Uh, right. There is a, it's called an integrity test. Okay. Uh, which is basically an electronic device that. I guess he's, he's attached to the pile, okay. and they hit the pile with a like a handheld hammer, right. and that that measures a, a reading through the pile, okay. um, it, which it bounces back, right. and that that delivers a that basically delivers a reading. So, right. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for your valuable information, and it was great site visit. Thank you. No problems.